Welcome back to my exam revision. In today's video, we're diving into the fascinating world of SUVAT equations for GCSE and A-level kinematics. We will discuss the following topics. 1. All the different symbols used in these equations, their meanings, and their SI units. 2. The five SUVAT equations. 3. How they are used to solve questions related to 1D motion. So let's get started. The first symbol is S. Here, S represents displacement, its SI units are meters. Displacement is the shortest distance between the initial and final positions of the object. U represents initial velocity, its SI units are meters per second. V represents final velocity, its SI units are meters per second. T represents time, its SI units are seconds. And A represents acceleration, its SI units are meters per second square. While noting the values of these quantities, you need to be careful with the directions. Remember, S, U, V, and A are vector quantities, which means they are dependent on the direction. For example, if you have a vertical motion and you choose the up direction as positive, then down will be negative. So if your initial velocity is in the upward direction, you will mark it as positive. And if your acceleration is in the downward direction, it will become negative. Similarly, if you have a horizontal motion and you choose the right direction as positive, then left will be negative. So if your initial velocity is in the right direction, you will mark it as positive. And if your acceleration is in the left direction, it will become negative. Now let's move to the SUVAT equations. There are a total of five SUVAT equations. 1. V equals U plus AT. 2. S equals V plus U divided by 2 times T. 3. S equals ut plus half times a times t squared. 4. S equals vt minus half times a times t squared. 5. V squared equals u squared plus 2as. These equations are also known as equations of motion. While applying these equations, you have to be careful about two things. They can only be applied when the acceleration is constant. So you might have to ignore many factors like air resistance and friction if you want to apply these equations. They can only be applied when the motion is in a single direction. So if your motion looks something like this, you cannot apply these equations. Now let's solve a few questions to see how these equations can be applied. Here, we are given. A car accelerates from rest at a rate of 2 meters per second square for a time of 5 seconds. We are asked to find the final velocity of the car. For step 1, we will sketch a diagram and identify the knowns and unknowns. We know the car starts from rest, so its initial velocity is zero. The acceleration of the car is given to be 2 meters per second square, and the time is given to be 5 seconds. Looking at the equations of motion, we have the values of u, a, and t, and we need to find the value of v. Let's use the equation v equals u plus a, t plugging in the values of u, a, and t, we get v equals 0 plus 2 times 5 so v equals 10 meters per second. The final velocity of the car is 10 meters per second. Now let's look at a more difficult example. In this question, we are given a scenario where a ball is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. The ball reaches its maximum height and falls back to the ground, ultimately ending at the same point from where it was thrown. It means the value of u is 20 in the upward direction which means u equals plus 20, and since the object starts and ends at the same point, the displacement of the object is zero. Since the motion is free fall under gravity, the value of acceleration in all such cases is 9.8 meters per second square in the downward direction or negative 9.8. Now, as you can see, we have the values of u, s, and a, and we are asked to find the value of t. Let's choose the equation that has the values of s, u, a, and t that is s equals ut plus half at squared. Now, plugging in the values of s, u, and a, we get 0 equals 20t plus 0 0.5 times minus 9.8 times t squared. Now, solving this equation gives us two values of t. One is 0 seconds, and the other value is approximately 4.08 seconds. Since the initial time, t equals 0, is when the ball was thrown, we will disregard this value. Therefore, the total time of flight for the ball is approximately 4.08 seconds. With this, I hope you get a clear understanding of how to use SUVAT equations to solve questions related to kinematics. For more questions and in-depth understanding, you can visit my website, 
myexamrevision.com and please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and comment if you have any other doubts. Thank you.